Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil us while we may. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope, like wildfire in our very soul. For most of us, life these days is pretty full. Think about your list for a minute. You know, the stuff that fills your day. It's good stuff, there's a lot of it. Then once a week we go to church, which is full of good stuff too. Back and forth it goes, week after week, and it kind of makes us wonder, is this stuff what life is supposed to be? We have all of this, yet it still feels like something's missing. Here's the thing. It wasn't always this way. Look at the early church. They were normal people just like us. They had stuff just like us. But for them, church was way different because it wasn't about going. It was about being, being the church, which makes us wonder, what if we lived like they did, intentionally, relationally, not doing different stuff, you still go buy milk, but if we purposely designed our lives around following Jesus together? And what if we didn't stop with just us, but we started inviting other people around us, looking for intentional ways to include them, to care for them, to be Jesus to them? If all of us live like that, then it can change this stuff. It will change us. It could change the people around us. It just might change the world. Hello, church. 
what a funny feeling it is to be coming to you virtually again after being in person for the last four weeks. But we're coming to you like this today because today is Be the Church Sunday, a day that's been set aside, has been gifted to you so that you can nurture that aspect of being a follower of Jesus that sometimes gets lost in the mix of all we do as a church, really in the mix of just living our lives. Now, I want us to go back uh, and think uh, a few months ago to the season of Lent. And during Lent, Leanne, you um, shared with us some thoughts on what it means for us to be the beloved children of God. And in, in one of your sermons, you reminded us that to live as a beloved child of God is to respond to the threefold call to communion, community, and commission. Yeah, that's right. And this idea wasn't made so that we had a three-point sermon with great alliteration, Um, but this idea that there are three disciplines or dimensions of directions that make up our walk with the Lord are found neatly tucked away in one of the passages of Scripture. And of course, they're expanded on in a ton of other passages. But just listen to what it says in Luke, chapter 6, verses 12 to 19. Now it happened in those days that Jesus went on into the mountain to pray, and he spent the whole night in prayer to God. When day came, he summoned his disciples and picked out twelve of them and called them apostles. He then came with them and stopped at a piece of level ground where there was a large gathering of his disciples. There was a great crowd of people from all parts of Judea and Jerusalem and the coastal region of Tyre and Sidon who had come to hear him and to be cured of their diseases, and people tormented by unclean spirits were also cured. Everyone in the crowd was trying to touch him because power came out of him that cured them all. Now this is a beautiful story that moves from night to morning to afternoon. Jesus spent the night in communion with God. In the morning, he gathered his disciples around him, called out the 12 apostles, and formed community with them. And in the afternoon, with his apostles, he went out on mission and preached the word and healed the sick and cared for the poor. Now notice that order, from communion to community to mission. It begins by being with God in communion. Then it creates a fellowship, a community of people with whom the mission is being lived. And finally, this community goes out together to heal and proclaim good news, to minister and to serve to live out the Great Commission together. You know, after preaching this series, Leanne and I and the leadership of our church began discerning what God, or that God was calling us as a church in these three directions as well. And we believe that you and I, that we Guelph Citadel, have been called to embrace these three directions corporately as we seek to be fully devoted followers of Jesus. Now, communion, community, and commission are a mouthful, so using the language of direction, of movement, we've whittled them down to something that we hope will be a little easier to grab hold of and remember. And they're just three small words. Up, in, and out. We believe that up, in, and out are three directions that we're being invited to take as we create space for God. Space in which to nurture our relationship with Him. That's up, or communion. To practice hearing from Him through His Word and responding in worship and prayer. Space in which to make and nurture real, honest, supportive relationships with other Christians. That's in, or community. That's where there are people who know us really well, where we can be real with each other, because having a community to which we belong is vital. And it's in this community where we find ways in which our particular gifts and skills can contribute to the service of the family that is the church. And finally, in space, to share the good news of Jesus, because good news needs to be shared. So in the same way that we have experienced God's generosity, We look to live lives marked by generosity in every way, with our time, our talents, and with our resources. This is out, or living the Great Commission. Just like Jesus did and like he sent his first disciples out to do, we are looking for people with whom we can share what we know of his love and forgiveness 
and be able to invite them to know him for themselves. So friends, this really is the basis for our Be the Church Sundays, that uh, as we participate in those activities that nurture the up and in directions, that we're also intentionally engaging in life outside of our church walls. Uh, in fact, we're so convicted that this is the direction God is calling Guelph Citadel that we've adopted up, in, and out as our ministry objectives for the next few years. And we will be working to align all aspects of our church life and ministry with these three directions. And don't worry, there's going to be more information circulating about this in the weeks and months ahead uh, as we integrate these objectives into our life as a church. But as you're already aware, we've committed to making Be the Church Sunday a part of the rhythm of our corporate life together. So unless there's a special Sunday like uh, Easter or Christmas um, or some other event when it'll be meaningful for us to gather together, the fourth Sunday of each month is being gifted to us to be the church in our community. Now we've set up a web page for you that includes even more detailed information on the purpose of Be the Church Sunday. And it also has ideas for how you might want to spend your time being the church. And these ideas are by no means exhaustive. We want to encourage you to pray and discern how God might want you to engage with others on Be the Church Sunday. And don't hesitate to connect with Peter or myself, or even with members of the Mission Board and Senior Pastoral Care Council. These folks would be happy to pray with you, listen to your ideas, and encourage you on your Be the Church journey. And if you don't know who the members of your church leadership team are, just visit guelphsa.ca slash leadership. They're all listed there. Well, you know, Jesus said those who believe in him, uh, he said to them, you are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teachings, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. That's in John 8, 31 and 32. So how do we remain faithful to Jesus' teaching and discover true freedom? Well, we do it by learning to live well in relationship to God as we love him, learning to live well in relationship as we love one another, and learning to live well in generosity and service as we become the church to the world around us. So friends, as you seek to be the church in your communities today, let me pray a prayer of blessing over you, that God would use you to be his church. Let's pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, the privilege is ours to be called to share in the loving, healing, and reconciling mission of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, in this age and wherever we are. Since without you we can do no good thing, may your Spirit make us wise. May your Spirit guide us. May your Spirit renew us. May your Spirit strengthen us so that we will be strong in faith, discerning in proclamation, courageous in witness, persistent in good deeds. And this we ask through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now may the grace of Christ, which daily renews us, and the love of God, which enables us to love all, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, which unites us in one body, make us eager to obey the will of God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God bless you.